Welcome back. We are glad you're still with us. This is Good Morning Kenya. We continue with this conversation about data protection. We want to just help you know better when it comes to your information, your rights, and the path to follow in the event that they are violated. And we have with us in studio this morning Fiona Asonga, who is the CEO of the Technology Service uh, Providers of Kenya, just helping us better understand this conversation about data protection. Now, you've just mentioned something that is interesting um, about employers plastering former employees on the papers first of all do they have the right to do so does the employment contract allow them to do so mm -hmm. because a lot of the times when you sign your employment contract it does not state anywhere that when your employment terminates mm -hmm. you'll be plastered in the national newspaper and look like you've robbed you've uh, robbed your employer and or something like that like you're a criminal mm -hmm. it doesn't state that if, if the contract states that fine they should go ahead if the employment contract does not state that yes. then they have no business putting your photo in the newspapers to say you no longer <laughs> work for this organization and no one should contact you or deal with you it's On i think it's of that organization yeah i think it's 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 uh, really uh, playing bad on, on, the, on this individual mm -hmm. and sometimes when you follow up you find individuals have actually changed and because they've moved to the competition so that is done let the contracts be clear employment contracts should state you cannot work for competition if you worked for us for this period of time let it be very yeah. clear After, then you don't need to do this kind of thing and if it states that if you leave we will go and plaster you in the newspapers and then fine like can you come and sell me please let people live their lives <laughs> <laughs> now, before we get to the path that you can follow when it comes to um, if your rights have been violated, looking at this, at the fact that we're coming from a time where we, had, we were doing so much on the online space and we are still, you know, that was the new normal that we adopted and especially for our children who were moved to e-learning. They had all the time on the internet, they had all the resources yeah. available at their hand. From where you sit, Looking at the internet space and concerns with our children's safety, how are we doing? I think the safety of a child online is first determined by the environment in which they are in. Mm -hmm. If they are at home and they are online all the time and the parents are there, what is the parent doing to guide this child mm -hmm. when they are online? Do you know what your kids are doing online as a parent? No. And then secondly, because when they started the online classes, they were at home. They've yeah. been at home for 10 months, being engaged by the teachers remotely, having all these devices. What have you as a parent over those 10 months taught them about their online safety? Then there is the school. What are the schools teaching about this? And, and even when the schools are uh, getting the kids online, how do they have their networks configured? What kind of mm -hmm. content can the children access? So that there's a level of responsibility that also goes to the schools. Okay. And I think... Uh, my assessment right now is we still have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. It's not that we don't have the technical community to support. We do have yeah. a very robust and strong technical community that can support and help the schools. But there's not been sufficient interaction to ensure that uh, the space is, uh, is as safe as we want it to be. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of adults, pedophiles, posing as kids on kids' platforms, and we need to find a way of uh, weeding them out. And it's an ongoing process. Yeah. yeah. Now, when it comes to um, breached data or information about you as an individual, what is the proper way to follow when it comes to fighting for your rights? If you want to sue, what are the steps that you need to follow to just get, make sure that you have your rights protected at the end of the day? Okay. First of all, assuming that a company, Company X, has breached my privacy and shared my data with third party Y that I did not consent to, mm -hmm. I have to first of all talk to Company X and find out. First of all, why will get in touch with me? I didn't reach them. So first of all, find out from why. Where on thought. where did you get my information okay. from? Mm -hmm. And if they're not clear enough, go back to X, find out why did you give out my information? Because you have to also be sure that it is X that gave out your information. Due diligence. Yes. And then uh, tell them you, you, want, you don't want it to happen again and have a conversation. It's not that everything will run to court immediately, yeah. but a lot of the times, because we, people tend to have a habit of saying, no, I didn't, it wasn't me, it wasn't, so you have to really, as the, as the subject, from the you're goal. fighting from the yeah. onset to prove that your privacy has been breached and you really are trying to protect yourself. So because it comes in as a fight, you'll find you engage lawyers very early. 
at the onset because there's no room for negotiation and and these are things that can actually be settled through a negotiation mm -hmm. the company x knows they can't do that again Since they have to give consent yeah. and they and you report them also to the respective regulators if it is a technical technology company make sure ca knows make sure the data commissioner is aware because now we have a data commissioner mm -hmm. make sure if it is a fintech even the cbk should know that there are breaches and the data commissioner should always be in the know of any of these even if it's a personal breach, mm. so that they are able to keep track and to monitor these organizations to make sure that they are adhering yes. to set uh, standards. All right. Yeah. Now, as we draw the conversation to a close, looking at this Data Protection Day, what is the message that you want our viewers to take home or lessons to learn when it comes to protection of the information that we live there in the digital world? The message to viewers is that for every Kenyan, for everyone watching and listening to me, I'll tell you that the protection of your data begins with you. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to make sure that whatever entity you're sharing your personal information with can confirm that they will use that information only for the purposes for which you're giving them. And if they're not able to give you that, please just walk away or go in knowing you've thrown away your rights to uh, data protection and therefore you should not complain. You've decided to leave open door. Anyone can come in and pick what they want and uh, help themselves. Mm -hmm. It's a free for all. And the other thing is that you need to keep on being conscious of any changes within the, the policies of the different applications you're using and what those changes are. And uh, a, a platform that you're using cannot just suddenly change their policy and tell you now we have a new policy. They should give you notice. Yeah. They should give you time to read through that new policy and de to determine whether you want to continue business with them or not. You're free to walk away. You don't have to be a customer of X or of Y or of Z. The uh, technology space is very wide and there are very many options of platforms that you can use. Now, what are some of those best practices that you would encourage ordinary Monenchi to do that they can within the space that they are in to be their first line of defense when it comes to protecting your information? Simple things that and activities that we can in, engage in. Simple things, when you're getting onto uh, new applications, downloading it onto your phone, please make sure that you read the terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. Take time. Read the terms and conditions properly, slowly understand them. If there's terminology there that you don't understand because it's too legalistic, please look for a lawyer or someone who understands legal uh, jargon mm. to help you understand what does this mean, what are they saying. Analyze. Because you, you need to be able to know that you are going to protect yourself and protect your data. It saves you a lot when you're protected in the onset than when issues arise. So first read the terms of, and conditions, make sure you understand understand them. After you have done that, agree to the terms that make sense to you, that you are comfortable with, that align to what you want, your goals in life and what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that doesn't, leave it alone and life will be so much easier. I think those are the first basic. And then always make sure, even on your devices, that your devices are secure because sometimes there are applications that come in and collect information from your devices. Mm. So. Keep your device safe. Make sure it has, it has the relevant uh, features that, and you've activated them that will keep your content safe and secure to yourself so that someone doesn't, you don't download an application and I'm on your, application, on your phone as a content and I've been called to answer XYZ questions that are none of my business so that your private life can remain your private life and you can be able to just enjoy your, the technology and what it can do because technology is a double-edged sword. Absolutely. It can cut one way and cut the other way and leave you with nothing. Yes, and I like the fact that you had mentioned off here that we need to learn to print some of these um, contracts that yes. you're signing. Yes, yes. The original one that you're signing. Yes, Because yes. some of these entities along the way, they change terms and conditions and don't update you. Yes, that is very important and that is based on a personal case. I'm not going to name the entity, mm. but because I printed the terms and conditions, Way back in 2005, of they changed them. Signed. Yes, and they changed them without informing me. When they came back to me, I told them, "No, sorry, this is what I signed, and I'm ready to go to court on this because you never gave me the update. Mm. I didn't have the updated one." Okay, and something it makes a big as simple difference. as yes. that. Screenshot if you are not able to yeah. print. Make sure you have the original form of what you are signing, so that in the event they change terms and don't inform you, you have the legal capacity to sue or 
issue a cease and desist or just you have the legal backing behind you. So be your first line of defense when it comes to protecting your information. That brings us to a close of this particular conversation. But then again, conversation around the data protection, uh, breaches, and the consequences are things that we cannot fully exhaust in this one sitting. We'll be having subsequent discussions to just make sure that we give you all the information that you need to make these decisions. We have been speaking with Fiona Asonga who is the CEO of the Technology Service Providers of Kenya, um, abbreviated uh, TESPOC. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you for making time. Maybe you could remind us the social media handles once more for our viewers. Our social media handle is TESPOC underscore Kenya. Please ask us any questions you have. Today we'll spend time responding to your data protection queries, mm -hmm. and we hope that we can empower you to keep your data safe. Thank